you put your mind to something, but it also shows just how much dedication could take you far. Where am I, bro? How am I not being seen right now? All right, here I am. All right, I have returned, guys. But anyways, it's going to show like exactly what can happen when you really dedicate yourself. And this one is really like this dedication, this um, transformation is going to be about self-belief, to be honest, because this is what can happen when you really believe in yourself, guys. When you really start to believe in yourself, when you really lock in on your goals, when you really take it seriously, right? Because before, you know, we got started, she struggled with nutrition. She wasn't sure how to eat in a calorie deficit. Sometimes she ate in a calorie deficit during the week. And then other times the weekend habits would kind of be worse. And she wouldn't kind of know exactly why she isn't losing the fat. She's like, well, if I'm eating good on the weekdays, why the hell am I, you know, gaining fat if I only eat one bad meal on the weekends? And it was because there was inconsistency with the habits and it wasn't a lifestyle change. So shifting her mindset to making it a lifestyle change was really fun to watch. But also um, it just reminded me of my journey because, you know, she's from the Caribbean as well. And a lot of it was the portion size and the rice. And then on the weekends in the Caribbean, we love church and we love to have like big ass meals on the weekends, let's be honest. So um, it was kind of similar to that. And that's something I resonated with with her as well. All right. So here are some common misconceptions that people have about weight loss. So before we get into this, into this fat loss journey, into how she lost the weight, let's just dispel these, these myths right here. And people are going to say, why are the words white? I know white on gray isn't probably the best thing, but bear with me, guys. I am obviously um, working on that, all right? Anyways, you can't lose fat fast without fat dieting is a misconception that we commonly have because you can lose fat without fat dieting. And by the way, guys, when you do a fat diet, you're obviously going to lose the fat quicker. I mean, lose weight quicker and then gain it all back because it's a fat diet. It's called a crash diet for a reason. So it's actually more important to make sure that you have sustainable habits in the first place when you're losing weight, all right? Another thing we don't understand is that you can't lose fat and maintain muscle without steroids. Now, you could maintain muscle especially if you're lifting weights, guys. That's one of the keys. High protein calorie deficit, lifting weights, very, very important. You don't have to overdo cardio. We didn't do as much cardio as I see a lot of other people doing in order to get her results. Um, like cardio is something that is good for heart health, but overdoing it is obviously not the best solution. Cleaning up your nutrition is more important. All right, so like usual, the volume method, guys. And honestly, lately, I was talking uh, about this to a few of my um a few of my friends, like just how important volume is. Cause I was like, I was like, bro, if I eat a sweet potato and I eat steak, if I eat eight ounces of steak and I eat a sweet potato, I cannot eat for the fucking rest of the day, bro. I cannot eat for the rest of the day. Right. Yeah. If I eat gummies, you know, Doritos, Skittles, I can just keep eating that all day long. Right. I can just eat it over and over again because it's not filling. It's not high in fiber. It's not high in nutrients and it's hyper palatable meant to make you, you know, eat more of it. Right. So with her, we focus specifically on eating higher protein, just super important. That's going to keep you full longer. Of course, beverages like drinking a gallon of water is going to be good. Drinking coffee, you know, just drinking extra volume in your stomach so you can feel full longer versus when you're eating all these foods that are hyper palatable and using things like syrup on your breakfast, waffles or your breakfast pancakes. It's going to add a lot of calories. Okay. And then drinking your calories as well is going to add a lot of calories because it doesn't really fill you up, but it's a lot of calories, okay? So we focus on high fiber, high protein, volume, volume, volume. If you don't take anything else away from this video with nutrition, remember volume, guys. Volume is so important because your stomach volume is one of the biggest things ever. Like I'm drinking coffee right now in the morning, right? I drink coffee, I drink gallon of water a day. Sometimes I drink like calorie-free Gatorade or something like that. But just getting that volume into your, you know, to your stomach is gonna keep you full longer. And then you're going to be like, oh, well, I'm full and I only eat, you know, 600 calories today. All right. So the first thing she went through was the epiphany stage, right? So this is when you realize that, you know, you're eating heavier meals on the weekends. Um, you know, you eat your grandma's food on the weekend, which is something she did, something I did as well. I used to eat my grandma's food, used to offer big plates of like rice and all that stuff. Um, she would mindlessly snack on like Snickers, you know, M&Ms, things like that. And I remember in the beginning of the journey, you know, when she was first adjusting, she had a few days at work where she you know, snacked on Snickers or like M&Ms. And then, you know, we worked through that, of course. And I don't expect perfection in the beginning because perfection is just not going to happen, let's be honest. But making progress is what matters. So she went from, you know, eating whatever she wanted to kind of like 100% of the time. And then, you know, she snacked on Snickers every once in a while in the beginning. And then after a while, when she really believed, when she really saw the results, when she saw herself losing inches, when she felt the progress and she felt more energy, her posture got better, she started to believe more. And then she stopped that bad habit of the Snickers and, you know, replaced it with the snacks that I gave her, which are things like, you know, of course, Quest chips, protein bars, um, different things like that, just to assuage that 
that uh, craving, right? And self-belief, like I said earlier, is super, super boring because when you believe you can't do something, obviously it's not going to happen, right? So in the beginning, she believed, nope, it's impossible for me to lose belly fat. It's never going to happen. I just can't see myself doing that. I've, I've tried strength training. I've tried different diets. I've tried this. I've tried that. Um, and she just couldn't get it done, right? So she thought it was just impossible for her. And she thought she had some kind of issue or some kind of condition or something like that, right? And I told her, I was like, listen, we're going to work on the self-belief. But when you believe that you can do something, you're going to give it 110%. Every single day, not just three days, not just four days, every single day for a long period of time because you believe in it. When you don't believe in something, you'll give it, you know, you're all for like two weeks and then be like, see, it didn't work. You won't be able to give it enough time and you're going to doubt yourself. And when you doubt something, you don't give it 100 percent anyways. All right. She also realized that, you know, her her being inconsistent led to her gaining fat, it led to the extra fat gain. And, you know, no one wants to hide their fat in old clothes all the time or hide their fat in clothes 24 seven. And buy new clothes, baggy clothes. Like nobody wants to do that. People want to be wearing a two piece. That's something she really wanted to do. She really wanted to wear a two piece and be comfortable, but she couldn't really do that because she felt like she was skinny fat, right? She was super, super self conscious about her stomach fat. And that's something we could all relate to because let's be honest, a lot of us, um, for the ladies, it's hard for you to wear a two piece at the beach if you don't feel comfortable in your physique. And then for the fellas, you know, if you're not comfortable taking your shirt off because you have a lot of stomach fat or you have moves. So it's like, it's a realization that you come to and it's like, well, I really need to really need to do better. All right. Stage two PR in phase. So what we did for her program, like I said earlier, we prioritized strength training. Now in the beginning, she did mostly body weight movements at home workouts, right? That's what we focused on initially. And that got her core strength, her foundational strength good, but it also got her used to the action of working out consistently. Once she got used to the action of working out consistently, she began to see herself differently as someone who works out, right? Once you see yourself as someone who works out and you follow it up by actually working out consistently, then you're ready to, you know, be consistent. So once she did that, once she was, you know, doing those at-home workouts, we started to incorporate, um, we started to incorporate weights and she started going to the gym and we kept it at four to five days consistently. And like I said, strength training was the priority for sure because Guys, when you strength train, you're going to build muscle and you're going to lose fat because you have more muscle. All right. Calorie deficit and high protein, of course, one of the most important things in this entire journey. Now, keeping the protein high is going to make sure that your metabolism is faster. So, you know, because it takes 25 percent more energy to break down protein in general. So we kept the protein super high the entire time. We made sure her portion sizes were on point because portion sizing is one of those things. It's like you can eat too much of good foods and gain weight. Right. Just like you can eat too much of bad foods and gain weight. So you still have to make sure that even if you're eating healthier foods, if you want to lose fat, you still have to be in that calorie deficit, which means your portion sizes matter. So we worked on our portion sizes and it was eye opening, you know, for her too to measure out her foods and realize that, wow, she was under eating protein, over eating carbs. Right. And we prioritize, like I said earlier, the volume method, we prioritize fiber, protein and water intake. Those are super, super important. That's going to keep you full longer. Like once your fiber is above 30, once you're. Your fiber is like above 30 grams per day. You're going to be super full. Once your water intake is above 100 fluid ounces, you're going to be super full. And your protein is, you know, at least 100. You're definitely going to feel that. You can feel the difference, right? Because on average, most of my clients will come to me when they like tell me what they've been eating on a daily basis. I know their fiber is low just by what they told me. Their water intake is super low, like less than two bottles a day. Their protein intake is severely low. So that's going to mess up their cravings as well. Because if you don't have these down packed, then your cravings are going to be higher than most people. All right. Like I said, strength training was a priority and um, she did do some work from home. So I eventually gave her a step goal of 6K. I was like, OK, let's let's get 6K steps in a day then, because a lot of the nurses I work with, they already get 10 to 15K steps, so they don't really need that. But her step count initially was a little bit lower. So I was like, OK, let's let's hit 6K um, per per uh, day. And then eventually we did some 10K step challenges in the group and she participated in that and got her steps up. So that was pretty much her cardio. Of course, 10 to 15 minute warm up before each workout, just like I do. And then we'd have one day every once in a while where she would do 30 minutes on the Stairmaster or 30 minutes on the treadmill and then do some planks and do some, you know, some ab work, some core work. All right. Making it a lifestyle. So this is one of the biggest things. So she eating on vacation was something I really wanted to work on with her specifically because, you know, when she first came to me, she was like, yeah, I'm going to be going to, on vacations. And I was like, yeah, that's fine. It's totally fine. But it's never something that she was, you know, good at. So it's like, once you get down pack eating good on vacation, everything becomes easier because it's like, oh, wow, that makes it easier to eat at home. But then that also makes it like you have no excuses and you realize that. 
learning how to eat out at restaurants is super important and it's 2024 so there is literally healthy options at most restaurants there's steak there's grilled salmon there's grilled chicken there's grilled shrimp there's literally sweet potatoes sweet potato fries there's regular potatoes there's mashed potatoes there's you know steamed broccoli like that and that steamed broccoli and that steamed vegetables at restaurants it's like the freshest shit in the world i swear but anyways yeah so she went on vacation a couple of times and on vacation we just made sure she got her steps in and you know it was like more of an 80 20 while she's on vacation and she was always able to either maintain or even lose weight on vacation and then when she came back she stayed you know active because she was still in it right so um that really helped her view fitness more as a lifestyle instead of just a fad something she's doing temporarily because a lot of us we work hard at home and then we go on vacation and we absolutely just binge and let go and she didn't do that at all she stayed consistent and she still had fun on you know vacation she still had her parameters and one of the things with vacation guys that i will tell you is like if you're going on vacation yes get your steps in but because you're going to be less stressed your cortisol levels will probably be lower but yeah make sure you get your get sleep make sure you get some steps in like walk places because usually when you're in another country you're going to be walking places and then also try to knock out your workout in the morning give yourself an 80 20 rule but know exactly what you're going to do like if you're like you know what it's my birthday and i really want to eat whatever i want to for dinner you can do that. And if you're like, you know what, I haven't had a drink in a while. Let me have two drinks this vacation. But you got to set a parameter on it. Because if you don't set a parameter and you go off the rails, you're going to realize that, okay, like you're going to feel like shit. You're going to feel guilty. But if you give yourself parameters and you hit them, you'll be good. Like I would give her parameters like, yeah, you can have, you know, you can have a drink or you can have two cheat meals, but make sure you get these steps, right? You got to give them parameters. Um, you have to have parameters or you're going to panic if you go even a little bit off plan. All right. So basically what we did was sustainable calorie deficit. Increasing the step count, teaching her eating on the go, making it a lifestyle, and changing that instant gratification mindset to delaying gratification, and really increasing her self-belief as well. All these things is what helped her lose the fat and keep it off. Now, if you're struggling to lose fat, you know the drill. Link is in the bio to set up a call to see if we're a good fit. If we're a good fit, I'll sign you on. If we're not a good fit, I'll wish you luck, and you can continue to watch my YouTube videos. Have a blessed day.